Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to a upcoming three years in the making episode of iHeartGeek. I'm so excited! This uh, l- l- little backstory before we start. I'm Dub. I'm here with uh, Todd. I'm here with Mr. Winchester. We're here with Courtney. Now, Courtney, a, two years ago when she first, when she, she'd been on the show for about a year, she says, Dub, can we do Pulp, pulp Heroes? I said, okay, we'll do that. And it was on the books. And then something happened, and we it got canceled. So we had to put it. Okay, it's okay, Courtney. Don't get mad at me. We'll put this on the next, the yeah. next six months because we do the we do our schedule for six months at a time. Okay, no problem. And then it didn't happen again. Do you see where this story is going? And I was this, even sadder. This is the, we are now up to our fourth time, and we are said we are doing this. I don't care if it's me and Courtney. We are doing this one. <laughs> But luckily, we have a fantastic panel to Yay. round up and give this this the so you're respect I that could it have deserves. Left instead of doing this. No, is that what I I, I'm not saying that at all. Take a oh. freaking compliment, you jerk. Ah. <laughs> I would have hunted well, down. You. Just saying. Okay. So today's episode is brought you know to you by <laughs> Secret Dakota Rings. It's the only way to fight crime while listening to the radio in your jammies. Now. Except for Old Todd, no team. one can relate, but I love the I love the visual of it. <laughs> well, Todd, you and your tube radio that you your whole family sat in front of listening to Little Orphan Annie and <laughs> before the shadow of Lone Ranger. <laughs> 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 what was that like, Todd? Tell us about that experience discovering full like heroes. When dinosaurs rule the earth. <laughs> Visually unappealing. <laughs> It's the fun episode. Yeah. <laughs> so we are talking pulp heroes. Now, let's before we get into it, 99% of people do not know what pulp heroes is. Apparently, neither did I when I found out that my top five list was garbage, according to Courtney. So tell us what is a pulp I didn't hero? say it was garbage, I just said it wasn't correct. <laughs> I disagree on at least a couple counts, but that's okay. That's okay. Go ahead. Tell us what a pulp hero is, Courtney. Okay, this is why his list was garbage. Um, a pulp hero is defined specifically by the time period it was in, in which it was created, because most of these were done in pulp novels mm-hmm. and radio serials. So they span the time period of like the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s. Now, a lot of them have carried over to even today. They're still very popular, but the coolest part about them is most of them are the basis for our favorite superheroes. Yeah. May I interject? You may. Of course. Okay. The the pulp magazines that these are named after were uh, basically the ancestors of the modern comic books, and they were printed Mm -hmm. on cheap wood pulp paper, which is where they get their names. Now, I think one of the best stories you can get regarding what pulp heroes were, and then it kind of based on to what the superhero became, is the movie The Watch or the book The Watchmen. Um, tell me if I'm wrong here, but it, it tells the story of all these superheroes or these heroes that were fighting crime and they just decided they wanted a gimmick. So that's kind of how all these heroes evolved. And then the second generation became the quote unquote superheroes. And I well, feel like that's kind of a good story of how it goes from pulp heroes to superheroes. Well, the Watchmen is actually a pretty good representation of the pulp heroes because um with with very other than for the most Hatton. part, all, all the watchmen were regular human beings that were just quirky. Uh you mm-hmm. know, they either were super smart, but still human being. They're, they were not superhuman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, most Dub, of the, most why are of the you speaking here Italian are. today? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sorry, that was that was probably offensive. I'm sure. <laughs> so, uh, Courtney, then where um, where does it come into with like the the serial newspaper? I know that they kind of did that. They added people into the newspaper strips or serial newspaper strips or like the radio kind of. Where did how did those ones come in? Like, if you look at say like characters like the shadow which we'll probably be talking about a lot 
um, like the shadow started as he actually started as a radio serial before he transitioned into Mm -hmm. the, the serialized comic strip kind of deal. Um, but others were the other way they started as the serial comic strip and then they moved into, there were radio shows and then there were, there were Saturday. Yeah, there were TV shows, but there were also sat, there were serials, um, in terms of films because back at the beginning of the film era um they would do these like little hour-long serials that they would do and you would go and you'd watch two or three of them at a time for a nickel and it was like the perils of pauline and and just these random adventures and they pulled some of the the pulp heroes from the radio shows and whatnot and they did things like that like the shadow has it and dick tracy and bulldog drummond those kinds of things ended Buck up. Rogers. So yeah, Buck Rogers. And so in answer to your question, Chris, they kind of overlapped, mm. you know, some were radio, some were comics strips or the weekly, you know, the Sunday funnies yeah. and they would go back and forth with their stories. Just based on how they can expand the story or popularity or something mm-hmm. to that effect. Okay. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And most, most of these popped, uh, pulp characters that were initially on that cheap pulp paper, uh, they were almost exclusively targeted towards teenage males. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Action. Then let me ask this: Why do does it seem like that has such a strong, so much stronger of a female um, following now with these, with especially with the noir stuff? I mean, that's a lot more became a female based. Um, genre. So why why where did the switch happen? Anybody know? Or why no, did it happen? I mean, you know, it's like we talk about with our superheroes. You know, our golden age superheroes, Superman and Batman and Captain America. They were geared toward young kids, predominantly boys, yeah. like TZ was saying. Um, it's the same thing with these is this, the demographic for this was young adult or young males or males in their teens. And then, but I mean, you had stuff for girls too, that was geared toward girls, but maybe it's the same sensibility that we talked about when we've talked about comic books, people have just figured out you can like what you like and ladies like the stuff that the men like. And they spread enough that, you know, some women started Hey, what's mm-hmm. this? Leaf through it and it twigged. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, like popularity breeds different bases for your your yeah. fans. Well, and I mean, if you think about, I, like, if you think about Dick Tracy, you have two very strong female characters that that accompany him all the time. You've got Breathless Mahoney, and you've got his sweetheart Tess Trueheart. Mm-hmm. And so, and it's the same thing with. With the Phantom, you know, Kit Walker's always got his his trusty sidekick of a female, but she's always just as important to the story yeah. as the Phantom is. And you know, same with the Shadow, he's got Margot Lane. And so I mean, even though they were geared that way, there were still there was these strong female characters, even in the 30s and 40s, where where the ladies could be like, Oh, well, he can't do what he needs to do without her. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe that's part of it. So, I, I want to ask this question before we move on to the next part that we have. Okay, let's let's be honest. Courtney wrote this one. I didn't. So, but, but I want to ask. Um, so, Batman came out around the same time as the Pulp Heroes. Why was it that split? And he's not a Pulp Hero, even though technically he has all the same markings of a Pulp Hero. He has no powers. He's all his mind. He's a detective. Um, you know, I'm I can answer little... that easily. So Different why did medium. that split? Different medium. Um, all these pulp characters were on pulp cheap paper. Batman mm-hmm. from the original uh, Detective Comics, Detective Comics, was specifically put into a uh, a different kind of print. They were going for a different audience. They were going for a little bit more distribution and a lot more money, honestly. Yeah. And technically, he's based on the shadow. Yes, he is. Well done, Court. 
Thank you. No. Sorry. But I, wait, I feel is, like. Wait, is that a show? Is that the show? We just we brought it all the way back in the circle, right? <laughs> we're done. Ooh, we're out. Bye. We're done. Short show Perfect. today, folks. <laughs> no, I, I feel like that the Batman really is the uh, what the delineation line between pulp heroes and superheroes, and not Superman, Batman, because it's that was the line I think. And um, Batman technically is not a superhero because he's not superhuman. Yeah, he has no powers, so he's the <laughs> he took out Dark Side. Detective. Shut up. <laughs> he's just he's a guy world. that's got a lot of money. <laughs> well, and he's I guess you could say, I mean, with the exception of Sherlock Holmes, but in the in the superhero world, he's the world's greatest detective. Yeah. Which fits right into pulp. The pulp heroes. Yeah. So the shadow and the phantom come to mind immediately when you think of Batman. And and that Absolutely. is one thing we actually have seen crossovers with. Batman has been with the shadow. I've seen him with all sorts of different spider. Uh, and I'm glad that DC and Marvel, but mostly DC has really brought a lot of those pulp heroes in at some point or the other to a lot of their comics. It makes sense for the shadow and the Batman to do a crossover. Cause they're essentially, you know, with the minor, character. they're essentially okay. this. Yeah. They're essentially the same character. So let's explore that a little bit more. Let's, Let's discuss um, heroes now that would easily fit into that genre. Um, and, and we could go anywhere from the fifties in comics, but we're saying modern era. But you know, in the in the comic book world, what would fit in that? Um, like, uh, who is it? Uh, Batman. Batman. I mean, we've talked about him to death. What are some of the other examples we, we can think of that are that are comic books that have all of the Watchmen. Rorschach is definitely a pulp hero. Yeah. More than any of the other Watchmen, Rorschach is. Yeah, I would get behind the that. Um, the, the obvious one, and we talked about it a little bit before the show, the Rocketeer. Yeah. Now, I think that 99.9% .9 of the people that are listening to this would call the Rocketeer a pulp hero. Just because he yeah. wasn't painted on that paper. as such because he was not created in the time period. He's more of an homage to the pulp the hero. The spirit of it but, is the same. Yeah. And, but I mean, he, they've also, in recent years, they've thrown him into crossovers. Like you said, they did with Batman. Mm -hmm. He's done stuff with Flash Gordon and the Shadow and Phantom, too. Yeah. Now, that, that's another one that people don't think of as a pulp hero, but is, was Flash Gordon. Of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. All right. uh, well, <laughs> real, real quick about back to the Rocketeer. I mean, is it, were they trying to create him for it? Cause I mean, I believe it was like what I was reading was his first appearance and something was like the eighties. Yeah. But I mean, his whole time frame for where he does things is in the thirties, which is a lot of, a lot of where all these uh, dates are coinciding with everybody. So basically it's a time period well, because uh, we talked about it earlier, Indiana Jones being one as well. Yeah. But and I and the Rocketeer, that, uh, everything about his design is visually art deco. Mm. And so it's very 30s based. And he's not superhuman. He just figured out a way to basically strap a rocket to his butt and fly. <laughs> just like Wiley e. Coyote. And a rudder on his head. <laughs> Without the, the circle of, of dust at the ground. <laughs> now, Very cool. yeah, uh, um, we were talking about, again, uh, Indiana Jones, Buckaroo Banzai. Uh, there was even some mention of what's his name, Rick O'Connell from The Mummy I series. love that one. <laughs> you like Brendan Fraser. Come on. Who like doesn't? Brendan Fraser. Who doesn't? Come on. Not gonna lie, I do like some Brendan Fraser. <laughs> but again, the character he plays in the Mummy movies is—it's like the forties, isn't it? Thirties. Uh, yeah, thirties yeah, and forties. So, Perfect. if they if they're set in this world, why can't they still be pulp heroes? If if if, if they have all the earmarks except for the date. Because I feel like even more so than than pulp heroes were of this era, I feel like they were their own thing, and that's that's why I kind of have differ with with Courtney on what is the pulp hero. Because I feel like the pulp hero is the spirit of a hero more so than a date. 
Ed, you can tell me why I'm wrong. You can tell me why I'm wrong. Of a man of action, right? Yeah. I think you could say they're an homage to the pulp heroes and they fit in that world the way they're created, but they are technically not pulp heroes. Just because of the main reason that TEC said they weren't printed on pulp cheap paper because that's the definition that's the same thing with pulp novels and and some no, some of those novels are now considered classics literature classics of things like the edgar rice burroughs stuff sherlock, the edgar holmes. Rice Burroughs, sherlock holmes um anything by raymond chandler anything by dashiell hammett so like the maltese falcon and farewell my lovely and double indemnity those things are were considered pulp novels just because one the time frame but because of how they were created they were created as throwaway items Mm -hmm. you would read them you would throw it away that's what makes them so valuable today (laughs) right but there are creators out there who are creating characters now that that could be defined i would say as modern pulp heroes because they are so much in the vein of the real of the original pulp as a pulp aficionado such as yourself, will you accept them as pulp heroes? I'll throw the word modern in front of them, but absolutely. Like, I love the Rocketeer. I can say that. You enjoy it just as much. Hero. It gives absolutely. you the same feeling? Yeah, absolutely. And I say, that's just where I differ because I just feel like it's the feeling that you get more so than. I mean, so sometimes, you know, people say, you know, what makes this person famous? Well, it's just a feeling that you get from this person. I feel like it's the same thing with these heroes. There's a feeling you get from the superheroes. There's a feeling you get from the pulp heroes. Um, and there, I, I can't put my finger on what it is, but there is a feeling to it. And that, well, again, that's why I have trouble with the definition of pulp. A superhero, generally speaking, has superhuman powers. They're, that literally is defined as more than or yeah. above human. Uh, most of the pulp heroes are just human beings that happen to have a specific quirk. Mm-hmm. So would that be the skirting line with like Captain America? Captain America is a superhero because due to the how he Heroes. became Captain yeah. America, he's more than human. But like mm-hmm. taking them from the time frame of all these from his original story and everything, and then you know putting them in the letting them sleep for how many years? I, I'm, I'm he just get... doesn't feel like the pulp for for whatever reason. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is that where the line kind of ends? Is that you got the pulp heroes, and then you the next move is basically like somebody like Captain America, a normal person, kind of given. Uh, this... Well, how about this, Winchester? The difference between Captain America and, say, Sergeant Rock, who is very close to a pulp character, even though he was a comic book character, but he's just a guy. Yeah. Uh, throw both of them off the building. <laughs> Captain yeah. America is going to land on his he's shield live. and trot yeah. off. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if it's because the other thing is I wonder if it's because Steve is too good. Oh, because yeah, they all had a bad it, streak. Yeah, if you think about all the pool pillar heroes, like the Green Hornet and, you know, the Shadow and the Phantom that we've mentioned, and Dick, even Dick Tracy, there's there's that, they have that underlying, yeah, there's the recklessness, and there's also that underlying, like the Shadow is perfectly willing to throw somebody off a building or mm. kill somebody to get the information. Tarzan. Yeah. They're not Tarzan. afraid of killing. Yeah, but Steve is like, you know, he's that moral compass superhero. So I wonder if that's why he doesn't feel like a pulp hero. Um, I could see where, like what Chris says, where he probably sh- kind of should be. But yeah, I mean, he's also not. And I just wonder if it's because of, you know, he's, he's got a conscience and God's perfect those, soldier or God's mm-hmm. perfect, you know, God's righteous man or whatever Ultron calls it in the movie. Well, Are you talking the, about the aspect of goody two shoes? <laughs> <laughs> well, on the other hand, the original Green Lantern, the, um, goody two shoes. <laughs> yeah, the original Green Lantern, Alan Scott feels like even though he had the superpowers, it was definitely a found power. It would, there was an explanation to his powers. 
and he just he feels like a pulp hero to me which is why like you go back in comics and read like justice society they feel uh, justice league feels like superheroes they don't feel pulpy at all the justice uh, society with you know the original green lantern and um the original flash who wasn't as fast as our flash now and all that they feel more like pulp heroes because i feel like almost because of the limits to their powers maybe exactly right yeah maybe okay that's why we were talking about the watchmen with such yeah gusto earlier because generally speaking talking about the the watchmen they're human beings they're Mm -hmm. they're not superhumans i mean i'm not talking about professor manhattan or or dr Dr. manhattan Manhattan. of course but uh, he is the exception the rest of them are humans with quirks okay so this is kind of just reaching possibly but just because somebody said it in one of their little profile things that that website you provided todd does robin hood fall in any of this he's way before pulp yeah i I understand the time frame but i mean i'm saying like the basis of he feels like it Yes. I was saying yes and but, no. But according to me saying yes, Batman would also fit into the pulp culture. Because he's just a guy. He just happens yeah. to be super rich. Yeah, but I mean, as far as like what they're <laughs> what they're also trying to do, like we said, you know, somebody will throw somebody else off a building. Robin Hood is you know, he's oh, he he's gonna take everybody down to help put an arrow you know, through feed your forehead. the poor. Yeah, put an well, arrow through your forehead. You could say yes. For the sheer fact that Zorro is based on Robin Hood. And Zorro is a pulp hero. Now, Zorro is Robin Hood with salsa. Yes. Th- yeah, this, is, this is a perfect segue. Zorro's the Robin Hood of the West. This is mm. a perfect segue. So let's talk now about kind of the modern touch on all these pulp heroes with movies, with just why we're still talking about these heroes. <laughs> so let's talk some of the, some of the, more modern versions of the pulp heroes and some of the movies. Um, we had some great discussions beforehand. I hope we can tap back into some of that because it's some fantastic stuff. So let's talk about the movies of pulp heroes that just make you love this genre. I would like to make a clarification here. Fire away. I simply adore the music of Queen, but the movie Buck Rogers was a big steaming Flash pile Gordon. of poo. Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon, excuse me. Yes. Steaming uh, pile of now, on, Max uh, Seed out as Ming the Merciless. If you yes. read, if you read and the Brian book, Bless, Brian Blessed is Vol- Voltan. Die. But that movie does not like, feel pulpy no, at all. Yeah. No, that was the eighties explosion. Oh, that was <laughs> with the high. Uh, so uh, many sequins uh, had to die for that film. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yes. So, but but. On with the Flash. I mean, Flash <laughs> Gordon. We, I don't think I would even qualify that as a pulp movie. Um, the the hero is, but the movie isn't. It it. I don't think that took from the source material at all. So it's right, kind of being said, it's the template for movies today. Yeah. That being said, <laughs> personally, and I'm probably going to get heckled for this, but uh, the Phantom with who was it? Billy Blaine. Bill, Zane. Billy Zane. Billy Zane. Zane. Yeah. What a fun movie. I love it. I hated that movie so much. <laughs> I love it. It's you, you know what though? I think what makes it makes it so enjoyable for me, I don't know for you, TC, is is Billy Zane fully commits to being the Phantom. He's oh, fully absolutely. commits to being Kit Walker. Yeah. And, and you know and, what? You know, blasting evil. It's so it fun. It was specifically filmed to to follow along the campiness of the pulp mo- model. It, I thought it was just a brilliant piece of filmmaking. And you know what? He's a big dude. And to see him strolling around with a 45 on each hip. Wow. And the big old skull belt. Of course. Skull belt's cool. Yeah. Well, okay. I let, got let that me, out of my system. Let me throw this one out. And this one is technically done correctly, but it just went so wrong. And that was the shadow. It was technically done right. Could have been better. But it was the really bad. was not good. Oh, any of it. Penelope, whatever her name is, was Yeah, just... she was a terrible Margot Lane. Oh. And Margot doesn't have Margot doesn't have mental powers like that in that, the comic book. 
I don't think stupid. they shouldn't have put in the special effects with all the mind hypnosis things. Maybe a little but bit. That's with what him. he does. That's yeah, what he, he does. Though, the shadow no, he hypnotizes. But blocks. I thought the special effects when he they had the on the floor and it goes in the collide. It was too much for me. It didn't feel like pulp to me. Yeah. So okay. is, is that what went wrong? They gave him too many powers? No, where, they tried to where did it jazz go it up with CGI. That's what screwed it. They tried to, yeah, I mean, they tried to... They were, Baldwin should play think, anything. <laughs> I, think, I think it was around the same time as Dick Tracy. And they were trying to replicate the success of Dick Tracy. Because Dick Tracy is They did great. right. It was an yeah, amazing yeah, movie. Dick, yeah, Dick Love Tracy is one of... I, I have to fully admit, I haven't seen it in a long time. And during the uh, during the up. stuck in the house COVID lockdown, I was like, I'm going to watch Dick Tracy, and it it holds up, and it's so good. And I think what they were trying to do with, and I mean, they're trying to do it with the Phantom too, but the Phantom turned out better, I think. But they were trying to capitalize on that whole Dick there Tracy is. success, and it just they just went horribly wrong with the Shadow. That said, I think we need a new Shadow movie, and I have Dreamcast. <laughs> okay. No, okay, could it so, be that? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Todd. Uh, I was going to say, so what about Darkman, you guys? Did you like that series of movies? The first one, I didn't like the rest of them. Our great now, first somebody, one was epic. Somebody had a story about Darkman. Who had the story about Darkman? It might be me. It was you? Was it you? <laughs> tell, tell us what you told us earlier about Darkman. Okay, so Darkman, um, <laughs> Sam Raimi, the brilliant that nerd king singer yes. Sam Raimi, all wanted, hail Sam Raimi. Right, we love you. In Raimi, we trust. Um, in Bruce, we he trust. wanted in to Raimi, do a shadow Raimi. movie. A lot, yeah. He he literally he's a huge shadow fan, and he wanted to do a shadow film, but the the rights for the shadow are in a weird place, and so they wouldn't they wouldn't sell them to him, and they wouldn't allow him to use the character. So he just created Dark Man, which is basically a ripoff. Of the, the shadow, shadow with acne. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a rip off of the shadow. So that's why we everybody have believes that he's they, that that's real pulp. Okay. Yeah, because it's so similar. I mean, it's 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 a pretty. We love you, Ramy, but it's a pretty blatant rip off of oh, yeah. the shadow. Now, but again, it's it's just pulpy enough because, not to get sued by Condé mm, Nast, who owns the rights like, to the shadow. You know, Dark Man got screwed up and burned up and everything he's still a human being he is not a superhuman and the way they filmed the entire thing is very pulpy mm -hmm. now um mm -hmm. let's let's talk mexican batman or zorro uh, uh mexican robin hood i'm oh, sorry same difference let's be honest because batman is robin hood as well um little less money involved. now i have not enjoyed <laughs> any of the movies but i love the old tv series so campy. The, and that's what makes it so great. The the Are movies, I feel like they're trying to be with Ben Dattery. They're trying to be too sexy, and I don't know what it yes. is I haven't liked but, about it. But the what about series, Zora the so Gay great. Blade. Now that's a great Zora movie. <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing plum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well now let's talk some some of the ones that really. Did work really well. Um, I well, have one in my head. Uh, hold on, I just wanted to throw one in there, but for the, that I was reading about, but Sky Captain in the World Tomorrow, a uh, World of Tomorrow. Pardon me. Is that straight that off was, of? That no. was. I that was that was a made for later one, wasn't it? Yeah, kind of that they did yeah, that it's one. A yeah, post modern. It's yeah. But the way they modern. filmed it was terrific. My yeah. God. Yeah, the visual of that movie is fantastic. Now, very but, reminiscent yeah. of uh, Sin City, actually. That's, yeah. that's it's, another one I was thinking. That feels like pulp. It's not, it's but it feels like as, it. It's classified as diesel punk. Oh, okay. Really? Not wow. Sin City. Um, Sky Captain is considered <laughs> diesel punk, but so is The Rocketeer. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, okay. like, Good call yeah. there, Sin City feels like pulp, too. If Sin yeah. City feels like, well, Sin City is a noir. It's a neo-noir. So. Yeah, that feels like that could have been, other than the hyper violence, it feels like everything that you could have had it was, in the pulp. It was made to be that way. 
Yeah. Honestly. And they did a great job. And that to me, that's why I would consider that pulp, even though it's not from that era. Because it mm-hmm. remember what I say with that feeling? That gives me the feeling. Now there's other pulp pulp heroes that don't have the feeling, but they're definitely pulp heroes. Let's talk when we were talking earlier, Conan. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Conan is pulp and it's awesome. And I've loved mm-hmm. every version. I don't care. I loved all the I've loved almost every did video. Did you like the Momoa one? I did. Man. Really? I did. But that one has special memories on my on my kids' eleventh birthday. I take them to a quote unquote their first rated R movie. And we get we, we oh, watch wow. movie and that was Great the one I watched. In dub. What at that <laughs> at that point they can watch whatever they want, basically. <laughs> And that's something that we set up a lot of years ago, but that was one I took my kid to. And, and I remember that awkward feeling when they have the topless women and my son's looking at me and I'm looking, I'm like, I know I'm supposed to cover your eyes. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, but it was, it's a, it's a memory, you know, but the, I think the Conan stuff, even though it doesn't give me that feeling, it is by all definitions pulp, but it's something that we all love. What, what makes that pulp, even though it's, not it's nothing like we've talked about earlier he's completely human yeah he's I mean, he's, he's, he's no he's mortal oh. infallible he can be hurt he can be killed um but he's a complete that alpha a male snake. man of action so cuts it like his his first appearances with everything was weird tales magazine in 1932 and I mean, t- to this day, Conan is still in the forefront of, you know, any sort of, you know, characters. Cultural icon. Yeah. And the fact that Robert E. Howard was, you know, 30 years old when he passed away and wrote all that Conan stuff, you know, before he died in a small number of years just tells the brilliance of who that guy was. And it's sad that, you know, we lost him with that. Really did redefine the fantasy genre, period. Mm-hmm. Semi kind of created a lot of the fantasy yeah. Do- uh, uh, yeah. genre. Yeah. Well, wasn't it right alongside like Tarzan though? Burroughs, I yeah, think, was before that, wasn't he? I don't the know. Nineteen hundreds. The early nineteen hundreds, like nineteen ten. Nineteen twelve. Yeah. They said that his first appearance was All Story. All Story magazine. That's a twenty year yeah, difference. For, so for yeah. Tarzan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. That's but a I nice mean picture. Tarzan. Tarzan had the same thing, but yeah, I would agree with you. I would say Conan and Tarzan are very close to being I mean John Carter of Mars. They're no, all real similar. I never liked John <laughs> Carter of Mars. Am I the only I just, one? I just, I just I, found a little I love Conan. I didn't Tarzan. like that. Go what what's that? First appearance was in Tarzan of the Apes, All Story Magazine, October nineteen twelve. Hmm. And I remember, watch, I remember watching those as a kid growing up at my grandparent, my grandparents' house, the black and white. Oh, oh, oh. Johnny, Johnny White. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it, but it is an indelible he was mark. The best person. Yeah, and I don't think they've gotten it right in any of the quote unquote modern versions of Tarzan either. You know what? The the latest one that came out with the uh, the little blonde girl who plays. I didn't Sorry? watch that one. The one oh, with oh, Skarsgård? Skarsgård the is the latest one. The, the, yeah. uh, the one that his that Jane was the little blonde that plays uh, Joker's girlfriend. Margot, Margot Robbie? Robbie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, she plays Sam Porter. That was an excellent movie. I enjoyed the hell out of that. I haven't seen that one yet. I, oh. I remember watching Grace Stoke Legend of Tarzan and I was like, okay. I oh, like the you guys haven't seen the worst one. one. You, you gotta mm-hmm. see the one with Casper Van Dien. As Tarzan, oh, it's oh, horrid. I no. it is so bad. That good, huh? <laughs> but since you know, we're talking about my my boyfriend Brendan Fraser. I mean, he was George of the Jungle, and that's kind of Tarzan. George, George, George of the Jungle. <laughs> that was an enjoyable movie. Now, <laughs> having your best friend be a gorilla that talks like John Cleese. What? <laughs> now, another, okay. another hero. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk. Factoid: uh, Conan. Uh, first appearance, Phoenix on the Sword in Weird Tales magazine, December of 1932. Yeah, that's a big difference between Tarzan and, yeah. Yeah. 
Anyways. But I don't think they could have existed without each other. And as much as John Carter was important, I think Conan was more important. John Carter is basically Tarzan because it's, it's also it's also Edgar Rice Burroughs. Yeah. So it's the same guy. He just basically created the space version of Tarzan. Um, I don't know why none of us are bringing up uh, that wonderful Howie Mandel movie, Walk Like a Man. Never saw it. I don't even know that. I've never even heard of it. Okay, so I'm signing off now because nobody knows what I'm talking about. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, none of you guys have ever seen that movie? I've never even heard of it. It's 1987, so TC was already 40. (laughs) So so, I wasn't born yet. (laughs) 87? Yeah, you were already thirty, but uh, no, hell really? no, it's they they find him in the jungle and like domesticate him. Basically, he was raised. It was it was like a offshoot type deal of you know terribleness of Tarzan, Georgia, the jungle type deal. It's a horrible movie. I just yeah. it, it made me think of it for some reason. Now so. let's talk. Arguably, the most important of the pulp heroes that got made into a movie, Indiana Jones. I don't know why we're missing that one. Not a pulp hero. Not a pulp hero. Because he was created in 1980. Indiana Jones is literally Straight a movie character from the but movie. It feels like oh pulp. yeah, oh, oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's one of those yeah. ones that it just it transcends the date. And you know? John Carter from Mars. You remember how I said what year Tarzan was invented? 1912. Uh huh. John Carter from Mars first appearance 1912. What a quinky dink. That's a prolific <laughs> writer. He was doing a lot in 1912, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Important question before we get to our non top five list. <laughs> why have these characters, why do they still endure? Why do we give a crap after all these years? Because the I want to hear everybody's opinion on it. The everyday man. I mean, if we're going to talk about it, or I mean, it's. Back to Conan, I mean, it's just a big dude who can run around and, you know, tear you apart with a sword. And, you know, he's just a big, you know, barbarian kind of bar. Yeah. Bar fighter, you know, type, you, you know, you can draw all that from it, but it's almost the everyday man. Like we've been talking about, you know, that somebody can be, uh, you know, work out a little bit, pick up that sword and go after him. I mean, Dick Tracy just being just, like you know, me. super detective. Yeah. So. I, I, I think that's my thought for it. It's just an everyday man type thing. Very good. So, Todd, what do you think? Pretty hard to put a, a topper on that one, Winchester. You, you shot the arrow right in the middle of the target there. Um, <laughs> it it gives the... It's like Robin Hood. The, I mean, obviously, <laughs> they're all about it's action. Odd, adventure contest. And but it gives the reader the thought that you two could do this mm-hmm. if you just apply yourself. That's a nice little, you know fantasy and and this is bef- you know generally speaking the pulp novels is way before television yeah not everybody even had radios but they could afford that you know two pennies for a mini comic book printed on crap paper mm. fair enough courtney go ahead school us all no i actually kind of agree with the guys on this one because Whoa. you know it's <laughs> all <awesome. laughs> It falls in line with what we talked about when we talked about the history of superheroes. Is like people, people like to look up to something. You know, people need heroes, especially in times of hardship. And what was so cool about the pulp heroes is it was a weekly thing that they could listen to on the radio, or they could read the little magazines, like TC was saying, or you know, you could spend the nickel and go watch three or four of them in a row. These little Penny shorts arcade. Of theater. Yeah, or the pink, you know, and so, but like like Winchester was saying, you can almost see yourself in them as well because they don't have any powers. But I mean, with the exception of maybe the phantom, I mean, with the exception of the shadow, because he can cloud men's minds, but it's not really a superpower. The black bat was just a guy, but he was blind and, and he can see it in the dark. Yeah, he, he was, was daredevil. daredevil. Yeah, he was basically daredevil. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, you could, they were, they were easy to, they were easy to pretend that you were Lamont Cranston or you were Kit Walker or you were the Green Hornet and Cato, you know, cause they, they were, they were just regular guys mm-hmm. or girls 
who just did extraordinary adventures. Very good. Okay, let's move on to our main event. Now it's time for the main event. <laughs> and welcome back. Um, so for this main event, we're not doing our normal top five because once again, Courtney shames me. She would school us it's all. Be- it, well, and it's because we all kind of had, except for depth, um, we all kind of had the same top. Mine were so different. Like- <laughs> so then right now, I Harky presents to you the top 20 given by Courtney. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll go just uh, and go. <laughs> and, yep, and go. No, we're just going to actually teach y'all something. <laughs> we're just going to discuss some of our favorite of the pulp heroes, favorite storylines, and um, in my case, some that I think are are pulp heroes that aren't at all. So, <laughs> um, I don't think we're going to. I don't think we need to do these in order, but we'll kind of do these a little bit. Todd, tell me what what is some of your favorites? You know, I've, don't give us your whole list, but give me some of your favorites and why. Well, one of my absolute favorites is Zorro. And it's the same story every time. Mm-hmm. Every time. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, hey, they keep it fresh, and it's one guy doing a whole lot of good. I mean, it's, it's Robin Hood with salsa, like I said. But, you know, I come from Southern California originally. I can get down with the desert uh, yeah. escape and everything. Uh, it's just one of those entertaining lines that never gets old for me. Very good. Yeah, give us give us one of yours there, Winchester. So as I've been looking through this uh, this whole thing, and I'm not going to give like a favorite one, but I'm going to give one just throw out a name to uh, that they say that definitely maybe somebody should probably look up if they're interested in it because I I'm going to seek it out. But there is the uh, Crimson Clown. What is that? Ooh. That sounds amazing. Uh, the uh, real name is Delton Kraus. Uh, occupation, ethical, thief, playboy, former hunter, explorer, soldier. Uh, his enemies is, uh, is, pardon me, Detective Donler, and his first appearance was Detective Story Magazine, Street and Smith, 1926. He's a good fighter, and he uses a gas gun. So, <laughs> And the real quick history that they give right here is, Playboy Delton Prowse decided for undisclosed reasons to use the skills he had picked up during the Great War and subsequently as an explorer and a big game hunter to write injustices by stealing from those who had profited unfairly from others, then giving the money to those who more readily deserved it. It does it's a whole lot of, lot of Robin Hood. Yeah, disguised as a crimson clown, he went on a Robin Hood crime spree, spree <laughs> pursued by police detective Dahmer. Dahmer? Oh. Guys, you gotta see you Dommer. gotta see this picture of the crimson clown. He's got yeah. a red baggy jumpsuit with a frilly red thing around there, the neck. a white painted face, that and, and a conical horrifying. red hat. I've never even heard of this one, and I'm super excited to go look it up now. <laughs> yeah. So there we go. That's that, that's gonna be what I'm gonna start giving out for the next five minutes. So Courtney, I'll t- drop something um, on us. I'm gonna be a little specific. There no. is there's currently in Dynamite Dynamite Comics has has Shadow has the Shadow. Yes. And so they've been doing new runs of the Shadow and they're they're great. But there's one where he he has to he comes to Las Vegas because he's you know fighting against the mob, so he's in the 40s and he may or may not have killed Bugsy Siegel. Wow. I should check that one out. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Like I've got it. You can have it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I thought okay. that was an interesting way to use the shadow. So now I want to bring one up that once again to me feels pulpy. And I know it's not, but I think I, I would give it an honorary. And this was just for you, Courtney Vampirella. Everything from the costume to who I she is. To the hundreds of thousands of ep- of issues she has been in, she just feels like a pulp hero to me. 
especially with that costume, because that costume is the greatest thing that was ever. That costume would ever not written, have been acceptable in the twenties and thirties. <laughs> costume. <laughs> it wasn't acceptable in '69 when it came out either. Yeah. <laughs> Funny I, mean, enough. I, I always, I always joke. I mean, mainly because their belly button showing, and that was a no-no. So yeah, I just, I just wanted to throw that one out just, for, <laughs> just, just to see the expression on. He really just wanted to twerk me off, listeners. A That's little bit because it's fun. <laughs> You got another one for us there, Todd? Well, are we talking like modern editions what, or just whatever you're to, whatever you want to want to bring up so people should look up? Buckaroo is Banzai. Banzai. Is that, one of the pulp? finest movies ever. Peter Weller. Modern pulp. John with uh, Lithgow. It's a, a immediate classic. We were expecting that to turn into like a series of movies. Because the cult following on it was so Huge. intense. And it just one and done her. Uh, but yeah, a great story, great writing, great acting. Uh, one for the ages. Very good. Um, Robocop as Buckaroo Banzai. I'm all in. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Give us uh, one, Winchester. Yeah, so this is Cobra. Real name D. Francis Cobretti? No, no. <laughs> oh, that would be, yeah. That, I, I, I'm with you on that one. And he does have a toothpick. That is his main uh, source of uh, power. Weaponry. <laughs> uh, his occupation is secret agent working for British intelligence. Uh, first appearance Terror Towers, 10 Detective Aces, January 1934. This is what I love right here. Powers and abilities, expert at yogi mysticism, including creating <laughs> illusions in men's minds, moving smoothly without noise, and entering a death light suspended animation, allowing him to survive being buried alive for days. Good hand to hand fighter and shot, carries a cigarette lighter modified to shoot darts dipped in lethal, fast action snake venom. He's James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> Cobra. Wow. I've never even heard of him. Cool. Courtney, what do you got? Um, I will say we mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again. Go watch the Phantom movie with Billy Zane because it's just stupid. I'll give it campy, another try. Too stupid, can't be fun. Oh, yeah. And honestly, he's a big boy. He fills out that purple suit pretty good. Yep. <laughs> And if I not remember correctly, way, it was much like it was I much like. I did not think that. Um, I did. I think <laughs> I think the same thing happened with Billy Zane that it did with Hemsworth when he was playing Thor. Um, he got they measured him for the the costume fitting, and then when they came back for the actual shooting, and they gave him the costume, the costume was too in. small because oh, yeah. he bulked up so much that they just had to build them a new costume but i mean what's cool about the phantom costume for punisher fans out there who love like tc's got the punisher shirt on where there's the skull if you look what's cool about the phantom's costume it has always been this way is the illusion there is the skull on the costume but it's only when you look at it in certain lights in certain hmm. ways yeah. so and it matches his ring very good and his so, belt buckle and his belt buckle Okay, I'm going to give, um, let, let's do two more after this. So one and two. So I want to throw this one out and this one you can argue with me all you want. But if you talk to me long enough, will. you know that I'm a freaking the world's biggest um, Sandman fan. Now, I'm not talking the Dream Master Sandman. I'm talking the, the Sandman from the 30s and 40s that wore the gas mask that... Uh, he was he was basically a Batman, and he was just such a fun character that feels very pulpy to me. Now, fast forward, if you go in, he's actually referenced in the Sandman novels. Said, well, when I would because he had disappeared for a while for various reasons, but he goes, when I had disappeared, the mantle had to be taken up, and it was just like in the in the ether. And that's why he grabbed the Sandman with the gas mask, which looks like Sandman and his mask, which I thought was a great just full circle that brought the pulp into the modern. It was a great whatever homage. Sandman. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. 
fantasy, I guess. But so go ahead and yell at me if you want to, Courtney, but I'm sticking with that one. I'm going to let you have it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Todd, give me one. Well, you know, you got to go Buck Rogers. Oh, you know, yeah, the, the Aaron Gray. Yeah. <laughs> and which, and in which we're actually that, getting a new, we're getting a new reboot. I don't want I it. I saw, damn well, it. I don't, I don't want it. But no. I was gonna. I was you gonna. Listen, what, folks, Cowboy I appreciate it. As a kid, the cartoon Do- Dodgers from the twenty third and a half century. Yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. Nothing. I'm yelling at Doug because he's I like, it looks as bad as Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy but Bebop is the worst piece released, of crap in the so world. So you can't sorry, actually make that okay. distinction. Okay. Because nothing is. All right, but now Buck Rogers. Go back to where you were. Obviously, Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon are essentially the same thing. Yeah. Um, I do have to give a, a shout out to Duck Dodgers and the, oh, from the 23rd absolutely. and a half century. Yes. Yes. One of the most brilliant cartoons I've ever seen. Uh, but I agree yeah. with you. But Buck Rogers is essentially, once again, Robin Hood in outer space. Yeah. What are but you going to so do? I don't think the series, the, the more modern series with Gil whatever his name is Aaron, yeah Gil Gerard I don't feel like that really took that as much into it's okay it's what it was based on loosely and then they just put a and I love I love that by the way yeah just, and they just put a super villain up there in what was his uh Ming the Merciless okay you gotta fight someone I guess beady beady <sighs> Mr. Winchester <laughs> very very nicely done Todd uh, the next one that intrigues me is the Domino Lady. Oh, that was going to be mine. But go oh, ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go oh, no. Nope, go no, ahead. I, we'll share. We'll I share. Just, yeah, the, her real name is She has Ellen a thousand. Patrick. It's okay. Uh, her occupation is socialite. Her enemies are crooked politicians, gangsters, and secret societies. Uh, first appearance, Saucy Romantic Adventures, The Domino Lady Collects, May 1936. And this is the best part about it. Powers and abilities. The Domino Lady has no exceptional powers, just guts, brains, and a lot of luck. And she just kicks everybody's uh, butt, apparently, because they killed her father. Mm-hmm. And she, yeah, she. Winchester. She wreaks havoc. With the name, does it bring to mind anything from, I don't know, the, the uh, what's Ryan Reynolds' uh, Domino Pool? Deadpool. Domino. Deadpool. Domino. Yeah. Domino's oh, yeah. a human being, but she's really lucky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. There we go. I wonder if that was a basis thing. I never even thought of yeah. that before. Very it was awesome. a homage to the Domino, uh, the original uh, Domino lady, because that's what she relied on is looks and luck. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They, the one of the things, the big thing they talk about. Well, one thing is they make sure to tell everybody she's a college graduate, but you have to remember at that yeah. point in time. That was like a rare. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But one of the things I always talk about, and here, Deb, this is for your Vampirella, is she wore a backless dress. And she used her sex appeal to baffle the gentleman that she was trying to take down. And also to getting close to them. Uh, mm-hmm. Playing a, a beautiful lady, batting your eyes, and and playing like you're not smart is a great way to pass most guys' defenses. Yep. Uh, a femme fatale, a, a Jennifer Blood in in the Jason. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Good call, Winchester. Mm-hmm. Okay, Thank give you. us some, give us another one there, there, Courtney. I'm just, I'm, I just built on the Domino Lady. She's okay. one of my favorite too. So, <laughs> okay, we got one. Last, this is the last round. Okay, I am going to go with disagree all you want, but if you watch them together, and I've just got I love how earlier, prefaces that on everyone. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I had I had a different definition going in, and that would be Justice <laughs> Society, which I talked about earlier. But if you watch, if you read Justice Society with Justice League, it's very, very, very apparent they are two completely different eras. They're two different things. And that's why I will give the Justice Society kind of that it thing as far as it feels pulpy. And honestly, and you should check out some of those old comics. They're a lot of fun. They're more fun than modern comics. And I think that's missing a lot, which is why the certain 
DC and Marvel's sales are in the toilet because maybe you should make comics fun again. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead, Todd. <laughs> uh, my favorite of all time is always going to be Tarzan. Just has to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, b- besides the fact that he fights against all the animal screw uppery, there's always opportunities to throw in human screw uppery to go around the storylines. Yeah. Never ending story. Never ending story. Uh, you got to appreciate a guy you had who to. just fights anything to. that bothers him and wipes with a you know tree branch. <laughs> and, and well, at least he knew it wasn't. Uh, Poison ivy. Poison ivy. <laughs> Woo. You only make that mistake once. <laughs> <laughs> Winchester. Now, now that the potty jokes are done, let's give it. Let, let's hear oh, your last one. I'll tray you. Oh. <laughs> oh. Don't, don't let so the now. sadness. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah. So, and now reading all this, which once again, Todd, thank you for this website. This is fantastic where all these are coming from. And I never even realized it, but and this is good for me to be somebody who I really like, uh, the saint. Really? How was a, he was a pulp hero. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. real name. I love this Simon Templar possibly. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, <laughs> adventure and thief. Uh, his first appearance was, uh, Meet the Tiger, who the publisher was Ward Locke, uh, September 1928. Powers and abilities, quick witted, resourceful, and inventive, good fighter. So, Sounds and, like Batman. And it was yeah. a tragically mm-hmm. overlooked movie. I, I, I love that movie. Great. Yeah. Oh, and Val Kilmer? Yes, yes I and, thought it was uh, amazing. Elizabeth Shue. Yep. Yes. I, I love great you movie. guys. Great movie. Because I thought I was the only person that oh, liked no. that movie. I don't know <laughs> why that got the, the scrutiny it got. That was such a He's so good. That should have been a flagpole or tent pole movie. There there was five sequels in that movie. It was so interesting. Listen, uh Val Kilmer can do no wrong to me. I mean, first uh, off, playing Batman. Jim Morrison. Um Bat- and Batman and Robin. I don't Doc care. Holiday. He can still be Batman. He was Jim Morrison. He was so bad. And he was Doc Holliday. He can do no I wrong. I like this Batman. I'm with you, Courtney. I enjoyed him as Batman. Too. I'm with you. Mm, Batman. So, yeah. What about the, the Val Kilmer Appreciation Society mentioned? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. And by the way, there were, I guess the, the big screen, uh, let's see, television. Roger Moore. Yes, there we go. He was a good saint, uh, too. Yeah. <sighs> As Ian usual, everything Ogilvy. he touches turns to dog crap. He was just James Bond as the saint. And he turned that into dog crap, too. My right. personal opinion. So. I think Let what guess. was he so likes good Connery. about Val Kilmer as the saint is, is because Kilmer is so good at being a chameleon when he's in his roles. Absolutely. When, when Simon was doing all of his different characters, you know, that that's essentially what the saint does. Every time he was embodying a Simon as a different person, he was, it was totally believable. Totally believable. He was entirely, he was a different person. And so I think that's what makes that, that. And and I'm going to tell our listeners right now, go and find that movie. I don't, I don't even know. I think it's on Netflix. If it's on, on yeah, it's on, it is definitely on one of the streaming ones. I've seen it come across. It's so worth it. It's just such a fun movie. Or you know you you can own the movie. It's okay yes. too. You know that, that's a good for thing. those who who are not collectors anymore. I know there was a new TV show version that came out, but I haven't seen any of it. I didn't watch any of it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Kilmer is a pretty yeah. hard act to follow. Oh yeah, yes. agreed. Okay, Courtney, you give us your final one. Blow us all away. Destroy okay. this place with your vast no. knowledge of. This is just my favorite. And I wish I wish there would be a it's Vampirella. Version. No. <laughs> um, it'll never the answer will never be Vampirella. <laughs> Kilmer. <Always> Vampirella. <laughs> Kilmer can play Vampirella and nail it. <laughs> All right, that I will accept. That I will accept. That was um, great. <laughs> I'm never gonna get that image out of my head. Just now. Won. You know, won right? the internet. Thank you. Don't even try you. anymore. <laughs> he won iHeartGeek. Yeah. I'm done. The show is I'll now see yours. You all later. You uh, own the show now. <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> I need a mic. 
Okay, so there was a run in Dynamite Comics not too long ago. And it was literally called the Justice Justice Society of America, but it wasn't the Justice Society. It was Society. masks. It was the masks. Yeah. It was Doc Savage, The Phantom, The Shadow, and, um, oh, poop. Never heard of a I know who you're talking about. It's bothering me. <laughs> I can't think of the name. It was the four of them. It was the four of them. Um, but it was, a. Uh, Doc Savage, The Phantom, The Shadow. I have it somewhere um, in my boxes and I'm not... Mm. Was it like in Green Hornet? Head. Yes, it was yes. Green Hornet. Yeah. And so it was all four of them and it was basically a team-up of all That's four of them. That's a pretty outstanding the, lineup. It's the first time in the, all their histories that they they were in a book together. Or they were together. And so... No, it was Zorro. It was Zorro. Zorro. That's who it was. <laughs> it was Zorro, the Phantom, the Greek, the um, Doc Savage, and the Shadow, and uh, it was the most fun romp, yeah, ever. Yeah, because Zorro and um, Zorro and the Fa the Shadow would would get into it because you know the Phantom uses guns. Zoro uses a whip and he's like, What damage can you do with a whip? And Zoro's like, I'll show you. <laughs> so, Ow, that hurts. You know, something like uh, that. I I would love to see a movie mashup oh. like the Avengers of these characters. That'd be a tough right, and but yes. Do I have do I have ideas of who should play them in my head? Yes, sir. I certainly do. do. But yeah, but I would Courtney. Just, they already did make a movie like that. Mystery Men. Oh, a little bit, yeah. A little, a little yes. bit, yeah. A little I will bit. give you that. That <laughs> Mystery Men could be a pulp. Absolutely. They're yes. all normal I'm people. Definitely. Well, the spleen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the spleen. <laughs> I get angry. <laughs> I shovel <laughs> and I shovel <laughs> well. Um, <laughs> such a great underappreciated, another underappreciated movie. I agree. Soundtrack with uh, saw it out. in the movie theater. Uh, uh, you know, I no. appreciate that. And that is the show, guys. Okay. Thank you so much for everybody for joining us. Um, next week, I think that we are taking the week off because it is Thanksgiving. So we will be putting up a Patreon episode for y'all to enjoy. And until next time, I'm Dub. I'm here with Todd. I'm here with Mr. Winchester. We're here with Courtney. Check out the website. Do all this www.iheartgeekshow.com. Use the comment. We paid extra for it. Go to our Patreon. Go to everything else. And until next time, keep on geeking on, guys. You have been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.